Welcome to the Board Again Games Top 10 Games of 2021. These are all games that I've gotten to play. I have a list of games that I still want to play but I haven't had the chance to yet, so keep that in mind as you watch this video. Please also like, comment, and subscribe so I can keep making videos like this one. Let's go ahead and get to the games though. At number 10, we have Floriferous, designed by Steve Finn and put out by Eduardo Barof's Pencil First Games. It was a hard decision between this one and Whatnot Cabinet for my calming, relaxing game from Pencil First. This one had a solo mode and artwork from Clementine Campardu that set it just a little bit ahead. Both games have a nice puzzle choice for a game group without feeling too in your face. Number 10, Floriferous by Steve Finn. Bill Walker Harding was able to snag a spot with his Llama Land at number 9, published by Lookout Games. It's no secret that I'm a fan of his spatial orientation games, but this one has a great joviality with the llamas and the 3D build-out of your area. It makes for interesting spatial decisions, and the goal cards give just enough variety to a game that usually ends up close in score. Plus, you get to play with llama pieces. Which reminds me, this is the only game on this list I haven't done a Let's Play or other separate video for, which says something about this game. I don't know what. Maybe I need to do one of those. Number nine, Llama Land by Phil Walker Harding. Number eight on my list feels a little bit like cheating because it's a rework of a game I already love. Honestly, that's the only reason for it not being ranked higher. I was trying to balance that reality out with how much I want to play it again. Cartographer's Heroes by John Brieger and Jordy Aiden and published by Thunderworks Games includes new maps, new heroes, plus more monsters and more to share. Thunderworks has also made it possible for you to make your own maps and print those out. I laminate all my sheets for games like this and did this day one with this game. This update will keep Cartographers in my regularly played rotation of games. Cartographers Heroes at number 8. Embarcadero by Adam Buckingham and Ed Marriott with artwork by Janos Orban and published by Renegade Games is my personal favorite tactile and spatial element puzzle of the year. I just haven't got enough other people to play it with me. The market makes for interesting decisions, ships fill up the harbor, and big point decisions can feel oh so satisfying. My only regret with this game is not playing it more. Plus, it prompted me to learn more about the history of San Francisco in the 19th century. It's a fun game with a historical tie-in, and that's a win for me. Embarcadero at number 7. I ordered the next game on a whim when I saw AAG's Big Game Night announcement this year. I knew they were generally fun games, but I had no idea how much fun this game would be. Whirling Witchcraft by Eric Anderson Sunden takes engine building and puts a twist in the game. With fast, unique gameplay that you want to play one more time, this was a welcome addition to games. Plus, the cauldrons are another neat element to a game that could have just used cards. Games are supposed to be fun, and this one captures that spirit. Number 6, Whirling Witchcraft by Eric Anderson Sunden. Furnace is number 5 on my list. How did it even get here? What is going on? I had zero interest in this game from the initial description and the cover art. The game by Ivan Lashin and published by Hobby World and Arcane Wonders is a minimalist celebration of the art of capitalism. Again, another fast engine building game, except this one makes you wonder why money is the goal of it all anyway. Who knew coal smoke sunsets could be so awe-inspiring? Now, let me ruthlessly exploit these resources while I benefit from a rig system to beat you senseless with my pals of Scrooge McDuck Gold. Furnace at number 5 by Ivan Lashin. Let's continue the 2021 Top 10 Rundown by looking at number 4, Cubitos by John D. Clare. And the second game on this list published by AEG, which is even the last one. Again, how could this have happened? I didn't think a dice pool building game about racing around a decision dependent track would be fun. The game is all about luck mitigation and management. There's a ton of variability and we have laughed uproariously at the situations we have found ourselves in as we imagined our little people running around the track. This one doesn't need anything else to have staying power and it's one that if I have enough time, I will always say yes to another game. Number 4, Cubitos by John D. Clare. Dinosaur Island rocked my world a couple of years ago when it merged theme with its independent decision making and its hideously lovable fluorescent skin. Coming in at number 3 this year is Dinosaur World. While this game still has Brian Lewis on board for design, Jonathan Gilmore had no part in the creation, and Brian was instead joined by David McGregor and Marissa Masura. Quantre Mariah still contributed wonderful artwork to the game to only mildly burn your retinas. The gameplay feels more interesting and seems to be dependent on even more efficiencies. The only reason it hasn't supplanted the original for me is that I have only played it a couple of times. But there are dino meeples and jeeples now. Honestly, there are more and probably better decisions to make in this one, and if I separated that from nostalgia, I would probably rank this higher personally. 
you definitely get to build a satisfying product and it leaves you with a feel of accomplishments rather than burnout when you are done playing. Dinosaur World, published by Pandasaurus Games at number three. Speaking of accomplishment, there's nothing like celebrating a 1900-year-old wall to keep your neighbors out. Hadrian's Wall by Bobby Hill, published by Garp Hill and Renegade, is crunchy roll and write or crunchy flip and write, which makes me keep looking for better ways to make the best combinations. It's a solo gamer's game which you can enjoy in serene company. That's the essence of it. Do I really need to say any more? Hadrian's Wall by Bobby Hill. Finally, my number one game of the year is a complete surprise to me. It's the game I would most likely recommend for a quick game or to share with people that might not be regular gamers. Cascadia by Randy Flynn and published by Flat Out and AAG has an intuitive beauty to the game which makes it play well casually and the solo game is quite enjoyable and relaxing too. The wooden pieces are satisfying as well as getting those keystone tiles matched properly with the right animals. The art of the game is simple and invites you in. The game builds incredibly well on the abstract category and makes the game feel as if we all want to be a part of it. Thanks Randy and everyone at Flat Out. You did an amazing job and I see this becoming a classic. Again, if you're curious about my honorable mentions or to see most of these games, you can check out the links below this video. Let me know what you think the best game of 2021 is or why I just messed up everything with my list. Happy New Year and happy gaming.